What's up, everybody? Rob from Bud Ends here. Thanks a lot for tuning into the channel. I'm really excited about today's video. Uh, I had a chance yesterday to jump on a Skype call with my good friend and Bud Ends ambassador, Johnny Ulichny. Johnny just finished uh, his rookie season playing in the Ontario Junior Hockey League, where he made the All Star team. Uh, we talk about all things hockey. Uh, he and I are both in uh, social isolation and quarantine, so we were talking a little bit about the, the current state of affairs. And uh, we also talked a lot about what it takes to get to the junior hockey level, getting drafted into the Ontario Hockey League, and much more. So, hope you like the video, and thanks a lot, Johnny, for coming on, and stay tuned for some more. Uh, I'm interested, man. So, you grew up uh, just outside Windsor, and uh, you said you didn't really like hockey at the beginning? Was that what you said earlier? Or what, yeah, what was I, the... I just didn't like the game, and I think that's, you know, I think it was just growing pains, to be honest. I just didn't like going to like Sunday skates and putting skates on. And, uh, but I just, I, as I, as I grew up, I said, you know, like I kind of just like love the game and I met good people with that was in the game too. Right. So I kind of met buddies when I was, you know, seven, eight years old that I'm still friends with today. And yeah. I started playing double A with spring hockey tournaments, triple A. And last year I played my first year junior up in Leamington, which is about 45 minutes from my house. So I lived at home still. And, uh, Last season, I found myself in Toronto playing for the Markham Royals in the OJHL. That's pretty sick, man. Uh, what was the, uh, you know, when was the tipping point? When was the, when, when for you did you just like realize that you, uh, you know, you, you had the skill and you wanted to take your hockey career to the next level? Like, uh, how, did, how did that happen for you? Honestly, I think it was just me just being motivated, you know, and being surrounded by good people and, you know, good mentors, coaches. And I've actually I've learned a lot from just, teachers in general just like their life lessons and stuff like that but I just realized that you know even you know hanging out with you and you know we've had a, quite the relationship for quite some time now so you know just hanging out with guys like you that have been around the game that know the game that understand the game that kind of made me realize that you know play the game as long as you can and within that you'll learn many life lessons and I've learned many life lessons and I'm only 17 years old. You know what yeah, I mean? it's inspiring, man. I, I think, uh, you know, just getting to know you through the years and watching, you know, your progression. Um, you know, I remember when you first reached out to me and you were talking to me about, you know, wanting to play junior and you had the, you know, some people, uh, uh, you know, scouts and coaches, you know, sn sniffing around looking for, you know, players like yourself. And, uh, you know, I remember when you, uh, you, you first had that opportunity to go play junior, I was really excited for you just to hear your passion and like hear your excitement. Um, so what was it like for you this year, man? What was your first year living at, living away from home and uh, playing junior hockey? What was uh, what was the experience like? Yeah, it was great. I've you know uh, I've I've learned a lot, not just about hockey, but just in life in general. That you know, I had a car up in Toronto, and I learned that you know, living costs money. Gas costs money. Cars cost money. And you know, that was a big eye opener for me. That you know, a big grown up experience. That you know, this is just the beginning and. You know, I had some great billets that, you know, cared for me and, you know, just like, just like, like I cared for them too, right? So uh, my billet parents were great and I had a billet brother that was my age too that was a goalie that was playing junior C and, you know, we kind of just bonded and had that special connection and I met him through school. So I guess you could say that that relationship just made me a better person, but it just made me realize that in life, not, no one feels sorry for you and you just got to be tough mentally and just... You know, as much as it sucks living away from home, you learn a lot and it's quite the experience. Yeah, that's pretty That's pretty sick, man. And you mentioned uh, you're only 17 years old. Uh, I say that from my experience, uh, you know, I went off to play junior hockey. Uh, I, left, I left home when I was, I think, 18 after high school. So I had already finished high school and, and, and traveled away to play junior for my first year. Uh, <clears throat> what was it like uh, being in high school and having to leave? Like, I'm assuming you're a senior this year. Was it your last yeah. year? So, so did you, yeah, did you, are you graduating from a different school or where, where are your, where's your studies? Like, where are you right now with your education? So right now I, uh, actually in the summer I got a call from like Markham team and they wanted me to come play there. And like, I wasn't really sure. Like I knew that I wanted to pursue hockey. Like, like you said, that tipping point, like after playing my first year of junior, like I knew I like, this is something that I want to pursue as long as I can. So in the summer I got that call from Markham and they were just talking, like they really want me to come play there and stuff like that. And I wasn't sure like, what to expect. You know, I first threw it away from home. I'm still in high school. I still got to go to school. I got to graduate, right? So yeah. anyway, as further research, I knew that for my hockey development and as a person, I knew that this was the best opportunity for me to leave home. So yeah. I, um, believe it or not, I think I registered school, I think, 
four or five days before it even started. So I didn't have a uniform and stuff like that. And like, um, I still was it a last minute decision. Was this was this a last minute decision to go play for the Royals this year, or when did you make the decision that you were gonna that you were gonna go? Like a week or two two weeks ago, I wasn't sure what I was gonna do, and I had some correspondence with uh, my advisor and stuff, and like I registered for school five days before, and I still laugh at it today. Like I look back, and I was eating lunch in my car, and now fast forward six months, I've made so many friends through school playing there that like we're like this now you know what i mean so yeah. and i still talk to them today and i still call them and like they'll call me and see how i'm doing and stuff and like the relationship that i've grown not just through hockey but just going to school there as a senior like it just made it was a big eye opener that you know like there is good people out there and you just gotta you know put yourself out there and not be scared like i learned like That's really cool man is, it, is is the markham team that you played for is it a is it a school-based team or is it just a no, set like a, a school separate from the team the school separate. So the billet coordinator um, locates all the players like into the billet homes, but yeah. all the guys that need to go to school, they find homes near the school so they can get easy access there too. So that's pretty cool. How many guys on your team are still in high school, and how many guys on your team this year were were done or graduated? I think there was all about five or six of us still in high school, but I know. A, and then a lot the rest of the guys were, old, were a little older. Yeah, a lot of the guys were older. Some guys were going to York University, like online. Some are yeah. going to some colleges, you know, stuff like that. But um, there was a lot of guys that were living in the Toronto area, like Vaughn, Richmond Hill, who were going yeah. to school, that were in high school, who were going to school there. They were living at home, obviously, right? Mm-hmm. But I think, there, I think there's two of us on the team that ended up going to the high school that were from out of town. That's pretty cool, dude. I remember uh, I played, when I played junior, my first year junior, uh, well, as I mentioned, I was done with, I graduated high school in Buffalo. And I went and played junior B out in Boston. It was like the only opportunity that I really had to play junior. Uh, I tried out for a bunch of junior A teams, got cut. I got scouted by this coach from to play junior B. But one of the one of the things, one of the stipulations for me to do that was I didn't want to just go and basically like you know I was out of school. I had to get a job. I had yeah. to take some classes. I remember I took uh, English Composition 101 at uh, North Shore Community College at night. So I would you know I, I was playing junior, but I was still taking that one college level class. And it ended up being huge for me because I got, I, I got, I passed the class. Uh, I think I got like a B minus, maybe something like that. You know, B's get degrees, but uh, mm-hmm. I passed the class. And at the time it was like, all right, cool. It was, it was, you know, it was interesting to do that. Uh, but then I ended up going to college two years after that. And those college credits actually transferred in. So I didn't have oh, to really? take that English class my first, my first semester, of my freshman season. Mm-hmm. So instead of having like a five class course load, I only did take four classes. So it was actually a nice, uh, I was really, gr- I was really glad and happy with myself that I did that. You know, For while sure. I was playing junior, I was still going to school and, uh, you know, I was able to, you know, get the credits and have them transfer in. So that was kind of right. huge, especially starting off college. You know, I didn't have to take a really, you know, a tough class. I already had those three credits. So that's pretty cool, man. Yeah, I know. It kept, it kept me busy too. Right. And like, that was kind of my life when I was up there for six months. Wake up, go to school, go right to the rink, come home, and that was, what was it. it like, what was it like be, uh, transferring high schools, like your senior year, and, and going into a brand new school in a new city? Like, uh, was it pretty easy to adjust, or you know, did you have that feeling like you walking in there, like you know, I got you know, it's nice to play. You're a junior player, you're playing junior A, like you got <laughs> you know, other responsibilities. What was it like for you doing that? Yeah, uh, like I said, I was eating lunch in my car. And, you know, I was just kind of did my own thing. I had my headphones in, I think, 24-7 in classes, going from class to class. And, you know, I kind of just walked with my head down and, like, not didn't really say much. But I know to this day, my buddies still joke around. And, like, apparently, they, like, when I was first there, they're like, yo, who is this kid? Right? So and you I, made a lot of friends. You made a lot of friends in school that were not associated with hockey? Yeah. And that's who I'm clo- the closest with today. That's pretty and cool. I still talk to them. We got a big group chat on Snapchat and you know, they still check in, see how I'm doing. I'm checking in, see how they're doing. And, you know, everyone, like, they tell me now, they're like, yeah, like, when you came, like, no one knew who you were. Like, everyone was wondering who, who this kid was, right? So, yeah, right. So it's not, it wasn't common. Like, uh, there wasn't other players that came through that did a similar path as you. Were you the only guy on your team at that high school? Or were you uh, teammates? For the, first, for the first semester, yeah. And then a kid for, uh, on our team came for second semester. Okay, so then he jumped in too, but at, originally just you there, hey. Eh? So uh, every, and, you know, you know how it is too. Like in high school, in senior year, everybody's got their their, their friendships formed, right. and like you got your groups, and then uh, you you bust in there uh, and he's the new guy, in. hey. Like and then you know, like it, like I'm kind of like an outgoing guy, like you know me. Like when you get to know me, like yeah, I'm kind of shy guy at first, but like 
you know, I met a lot of good friends in classes too, right? And, you yeah. know, like guys that I just sat next to in class and, you know, they asked me like, yo, what are you doing here? How's it going? Like, are you new here? Like, where are you from? I used to tell them like, you know, like I'm from Windsor. I'm playing hockey here. And they go, oh, oh, nice. Cool. And then, like one day, like that I sat next to who was my billet brother. That's not, that, that was not my billet brother. Just, you know, like not knowing. Yeah. He brought, he brought me out for lunch. Uh, we just started shooting, uh, talking and stuff. And he's like, I played junior C. I was like, oh, I played junior A. And then we went out for lunch one day. And uh, three months later, now I'm in his house, living at his house. So that's pretty sick, man. Uh, but yeah, I made a lot of good memories and a lot of good friends. And I know that there's plans already in the works that they're going to be coming down this summer and uh, for a weekend or something. So that's great. And, and just shows, it just goes to show, I try to tell people like uh, one of the best things I ever did in my life was like to get out and go after and chase the hockey dream, you mm -hmm. know, because it took me into new environments. It took me out to Boston to play junior. It took me into the Midwest to play junior, went to college in Boston, never would have done all these things. And I met so many is the people that I met is the friends yeah. that I made along the way which looking back on it were really, was really the, uh, you know, that was really the best part about it, you know, or just part of the journey, you know what I'm saying? No, no doubt. And like, that's one thing like, I've realized, like, it's good to have friends within hockey, but it's also good to have friends, like, without hockey too, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. meeting these guys, like, they're big soccer guys, and, like, it's just good, like, to get away from the game and just, like, have those type of friends who, like, have the same passion for you, but for a different sport and want the same for you, success, you know what I mean? Yeah, totally, man. I mean, it's it's great. I, I it's nice to have the boys in the locker room and be part of the team. Um, but it's also nice to have a group of friends that are maybe away from hockey that are doing other things as well right. that you can relate to. So that's that's pretty cool, man. Um, you know, I've known you for a few years, dude. You and I have become real close, and uh, yeah. you've been a, a supporter of Buttons for a long time. And I remember following your path. Uh, you know, coming up, uh, you, you were playing uh, for Sun County AAA hockey. And uh, it's you know, I remember coming to see some games and really being impressed with your game. Uh, when did you start getting noticed? When did you start feeling that there was an opportunity for you to pursue hockey uh, outside of your hometown and uh, to take it to the next level? I know, you know, you can tell guys too, you were drafted by the Windsor Spitfires and the OHL. Uh, but when did it all start coming together for you, dude? And when did people start reaching out to you? When did you feel like you had that, uh, that spark that people were looking for? Honestly, I think it all started like in my minor midget year. I had a lot of good uh, coaches that I, you know, that I that played for them. Um, just good guys to have in your corners, like good guys like you, right? Just that like, you can like go to and good guys in your corner and stuff like that. So I think it was just like any, anywhere from like minor midget up. And, you know, I talked to, like I said, my advisor and my parents, especially, and like coaches in the past. And, you know, they kind of just gave me advice and stuff like that. And my coach that was in Sun County, like he was, had a lot of good hockey connections and stuff like that. So, you know, I'd go to him for help too. So just throw it there and, you know, work, I think just working hard and um, nobody wants to know that, you're uh, not a hard worker. Or just a bad guy in general too. So like right. as much as it is to be a good hockey player, it's even more important to be even a better person. Right. So uh, in my sure. minor, in my, in my minor midget year, I just learned that like, uh, you guys, it's, it's a battle. It's really a battle both physically and mentally too. Right. So we went to a lot of good tournaments and I think just, you know, through exposure, through tournaments and through like connections and stuff like that, that this was, my my ultimate goal was to get scouted, and I think that's how it all started sparking through that st type of stuff. Yeah, man. I mean, I remember seeing you play. It really stood out. I mean, you, you know, one of the things you bring to the table, obviously, your work ethic, this, you know, the energy. I always talk about your motor. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, you really stand out there because your feet never stop moving, and you're, you know, you, you stand out on the ice when you play because of that right. effort. Um, and I think one thing, one thing I've always battled was with, with my size, right? So when I'm 5'9 and, you know, small, then – you got to do stuff like that, right? So yeah, I get a lot. I hear from a lot of kids, man. A lot of a lot of players uh, will reach out to me and talk to me about being undersized. Uh, you know, everybody always says like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm real small, and how can I get? How can what can I do to get noticed, or what can I do to make it to the next level? Um, and there's a lot of guys that are smaller that are you know making you know that are show they're in the NHL and they're it's smaller. You know, it's a smaller class player. guys speak now. Yeah. What What do you? I mean, what do you think about you know you being a smaller player? What do you What do you think about out there? Do you think about your size as an advantage, or how do you use your size? In In a way, yeah. And my dad always told me like the lower you like the lower you center your gravity, like it's gonna be harder for you to knock down the puck, or get harder for you to not get knocked off the puck, right? So yeah. I think you know I don't really look at it like I'm going up against a guy that's like six six or whatever. Yeah. I just like yeah. like you said, I just keep my feet moving and just work hard, right? And that's all it comes down to. Yeah. So for so you're playing AAA and uh, what was the first taste that you got? Like who was the first guy that reached out to you? Like I, I remember 
I remember the, the one time for me, like I was sort of a nobody really coming up until like my junior, senior year of high school, kind of similar to you. I was, you know, 17 years old. The, I remember I got a letter from a coach and he, uh, from a, from a division three hockey coach. And he wrote me a note, like a handwritten note. And was like, you know, I really like your game. I really think we could, you know, you could come be a part of this team. And I remember for me, that was huge for me because like it, it, for the first time, somebody from outside had seen, you know, something in me, right. and believed in me enough to like reach out. So when was that for you, man? Who, who was the first guy to reach out to you that sort of gave you that confidence that you could do the next level? Honestly, I think, I think it's my advisor now. He was the guy that saw me, I think, my first tournament up in uh, Toronto, I think it was, when I was playing AAA. And, you know, like, I wasn't really big into, like, you know, like, a, a lot of guys were having these advisors and, like, agents or whatever you want to call them, right? And, and I wasn't really big onto it. I wasn't sure, like, if this was the right move or, like, you know what I mean, right? So, you know, I, yeah. I had, a, like, a, a thorough, deep call, talk with my parents and, like, actually my uh, advisors, uh, Tyler Bertuzzi, who plays in the NHL for the Detroit Red Wings, his yeah. dad so oh, nice um, dude yeah so you know he's all, obviously a good guy to have in your corner too right so you know i think he was the very first guy that i saw and then ever since that like we have had uh steady communication especially during my draft year like who who was interested who who he's talking to who's talking to him you know what i mean so yeah. i think kind of really helped me and i think that that really went a long way that's cool dude so uh can you talk a little bit about uh, getting drafted into the o what was that like i, yeah. I, I was always <laughs> All, it, it, it was stressful. Like I said, like I said already, like just the entire season and the tournaments, like every game there's scouts there. Right. And you know, yeah. and, you, and I, you know, I tell a lot of people this cause I had my buddy that's an old four that texted me cause it's, it's his draft year this year. Right. And just, yeah. that's all I said, just play, like don't look up, look up to the stands and see a bunch of guys in the black jackets and, you know, with clipboards and stuff like that. Just play, right. Do your yeah. thing and be you. Right. And that's kind of what I had. I just kind of like blocked it off and just, play my game and stuck to who I was as a player and like come draft time. Like there was a time where like, I wasn't sure if I was going to get drafted. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you know, on, I think it was like draft day. I think it was like May 7th or like whatever. No, April 7th. I think the draft day was like, you know, like as much as I wanted to get drafted, I was scared that I wasn't going to get drafted too at the same time. Right. And I had to prepare for that. Like, yeah. You know? And there's a lot of guys in the OHL and the NHL who aren't, who weren't drafted. You know what I mean? And yeah. Believe me, I played with a bunch of guys, uh, myself included, dude. I remember nobody was scouting me, man. I remember being right. kind of delusional. I was a high school player. It was draft year for me. I was not really on anybody's radar. Never talked. I hadn't really been, hadn't really come into my own yet. In my head, I had like, I was good. But I was, uh, in my head, I had this like, like this crazy idea, like, somebody saw me and like, I'm going to get, maybe I'll get drafted. And I remember the draft day came and went for the OHL. And of course, my name didn't get called at all. I wasn't drafted. And, uh, it was like kind of tough. Like I, you know, came and went, nobody picked me. It was kind of an eye opening moment. Like I need to do more. I need to get, you know, but I, it wasn't, it wasn't a moment where just cause I didn't get drafted. Like that was it. Like I'm going to quit, right. but you yourself, you got picked by your hometown yeah, so, team. Yeah. So uh, I, so I got picked and like come that day, um, April 7th, like it was the longest day of my life. I think the draft started at like eight 30 or nine, whatever time it was in the morning. And like, I knew I wasn't going on like the first, like I, you, Guys in the draft, like, you know when you're going to go, like, when you're projected, right? Like, right. you just know, right? And I knew that I was a guy that wasn't going to go early in the draft. And uh, just even though, like, I knew I wasn't going to go, I still stayed by the TV in the living room all day. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting, man. It was, a lo it was the longest day of my life. Like, I was wondering to myself, like, what could I have done better? What can I have done more of? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and just as time went on and, like, the eighth round came, the ninth round came, and, like, I'm tenth round and the eleventh round, I'm just wondering, like, like, when am I going to go, right? And luckily, at in 13, like, the Spitz picked me at 250. So, you know, it was a big, big moment for me. And I think I actually broke out a few tears, right? So, <laughs> believe yeah, it. Dude, that's, like, that's, a, a, that's awesome, man. I mean, hey, you're drafted into the OHL, dude. Like, uh, a lot of players, a lot of really good hockey players can, uh, you know, play their whole career. And they can, they can say, I didn't get drafted that level. I never was drafted into the OHL or any of the, any of the major junior leagues um but so you're drafted into the ohl so that must have been a real shot in the arm for your confidence hey like how did how did how have you has it helped you as far as uh you know what you think you have your potential to be or is, did it help you in in like the last few years since that happened yeah yeah ever since i was been drafted i just had that extra motivation to do more and my ultimate goal at the time was to play yeah. in the ontario yeah. hockey league right that's everyone's yeah. ultimate I remember goal we, talk, we talked about this we, we right. talked about this back i think before you got picked we were talking about like you know, where you wanted to play and what you, you know, what your options were. And we had talked about, you know, 
you know, if you do get drafted, like that's your main goal. You told me like, I want to play in the Ontario hockey league. Um, and, and so what we're saying, like, how, how have you, how have you evolved since then? Is it still something that you're thinking about? Where do you want to go from here? What do you think? Yeah. So, you know, obviously it's everyone's dream of just to, to play in the OHL and, you know, especially in your hometown, actually my buddy that I'm really close friends with that I work out through in the summer is actually living in Windsor and he's from here and now he's playing on the spits right now. So, uh, yeah. I think it's everyone's dream to play in the OHL, but as time goes on and if your opportunity doesn't, opportunity doesn't come, then you just know that maybe it's a better idea to, you know, um, go, go a different path. Right. And you no, know, there's nothing wrong with the NCAA round. And I think that's the route that I'm possibly going to try to pursue as, you know, my hockey career, uh, unfolds here. So I think the OHL is, you know, a great option route to, for players, you know, that are, have the ability to do so. It's, a, you know, but I think yeah. there's nothing wrong with like NCAA, like you went to Merrimack and like you said, that was like one of your best times of your life. Right. So, and then oh, the guys come out of college. Amazing. Right. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of things, man. Like, uh, the OHL route, obviously, dude, if you can play in the OHL at 17, 16, even like if you're that good and you have a chance, like you, you thinking, you know, obviously playing in the NHL is the ultimate goal for a hockey player. Mm -hmm. Uh, the OHL route is definitely, you know, a great path for that. Um, okay. and, and for, for any player for that matter, if you have the chance to play in the OHL, I think it's a great experience and opportunity and you can take good advantage of it. Mm -hmm. Um, but having the NCAA route as well, it gives you a chance to season your game for a little bit longer. You can yeah, play a sure. lot older. You can extend your career a lot longer. I know a lot of guys that play in the OHL, and then all of a sudden they're 20, 21 years old, and then they're the OHL, their time is up. You know, right. they age out, and they got to go either play pro or they got to go figure something out. Right. Whereas, like, I went to school at 20. I didn't get to Merrimack until I was 20. I was a 21-year-old freshman. Mm -hmm. I had four years of, of college you know, to really develop into the player that I was going to become later on. It, it gave me a lot more time and a lot more runway uh, to season my game and to become better and just have that longer hockey experience. So I highly encourage players, you know, yeah, to look at the college route as well. There's no doubt. And, like, hockey can only go on for so long, right? And the college, that's one thing about the college route. Like, if hockey doesn't work out for you, you're coming out with a four-year degree. You know what I mean? From a yeah, great dude. school. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, uh, for me, it was like, uh, the, 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 the goal, obviously, like as a kid, I was like, oh, I want to play the NHL, win the Stanley cup. But then as I got older, it was like, what's a, what's an attainable goal in my near sights. And it was right. like, I want to get a scholarship, you know, I want to get, I want to play division one hockey. And then like, how do I get to that point? Mm -hmm. uh, and then I was able to start to forge a path where, you know, go play junior for a year in Boston. Then I got drafted to go play in junior A in the, the North American League. And then all of a sudden you're right there. You know, all you got to do is go out there and, and execute at that level. Mm -hmm. And there's colleges, you know, plucking players out of that level all over the place. So it became a real, uh, real obvious opportunity for me. And especially I, I'd already, I'd already like, you know, I, I kind of was older anyway when I, when I, I was a late bloomer. So the OHL route kind of uh, took care of itself. It wasn't right. really even an option for me. Um, so, yeah, I think it's exciting, man. We talked about this a while. Like you've got, you know, you're 17, you got, you know, you just got, you just finished your first year junior A, right? Was it first year junior A? Yeah, first year junior A. I played junior the all-star team. <laughs> yeah, cool. you're there. That, that was pretty fun. I got to come up and see you play in the all-star game. That was great. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a great opportunity. And I was excited, man. I was really happy for you, dude. It was fun to yeah. see you out there. And uh, same, you brought the game that I always recognized you for. I remember saw you, I saw you a couple years ago playing in the triple A. I remember just motoring up and down the ice, ringing, fuck, like, uh, you know, firing pucks, ringing the bar, like just all yeah. over the ice, man. And, I still uh, remember the, energy I still remember the video. The one, Same that, here, dude. the one that you got in the corner, I just rang the iron. Yeah, like, well, I think it was, it, it was somebody in the crowd. It was like, shoot it, Johnny. And it was like, <laughs> and then just fired it off the bar. It was sick, dude. Yeah, man. Uh, but that's a lot of fun, man. So uh, cool. So, so, so this year, you just finished. Uh, how'd the season work out for you? How, would, how, would you uh, how do you think you did this year? Yeah, per, on a personal level, I think I did, had a pretty good season. I matched my totals for what do you call it, last year's season in junior B. But I look back and, like, I look at the junior A level, like, the league is a lot better than the junior B level. Mm -hmm. And I only say that because the older guys are better in the yeah. junior A level. Yeah, right? I was going to ask you, what's the what, what do you think is the jump like? So you play, yeah. I mean, you went from AAA to junior B. What was that like? And then what was it like from junior B to junior A? Mm -hmm. If you can, like, uh, summarize a bit. I think just, you know, from AAA to junior B, like, the jump was obviously playing with older guys. Yeah. Like men, right? You're not playing with guys your age, you're playing with men. And I think just the lifestyle that it came with it, like, you know, you're taking a bus to road trips, like that you were never doing that in AAA, right? And just yeah, yeah. You know, the late nights on the bus with the boys and stuff like that. And you know, from the junior B to junior A level, like 
the older, like I said, the older guys are better, which makes the league better, which makes you better, which makes the team better too, all over overall, right? So I think just the fact that these older guys in the junior A level are better because they're just trying to still achieve a D1 or a D3 scholarship, right? So they're yeah. here, I feel like in junior B, a lot of the guys aren't trying for the same thing. You know what I mean? Maybe you have the odd bloomer that's trying to go, you know, CIS, whatever. But I think right, just, right. you know, I think just the junior A level just, you know, it's there's definitely a big jump. And I think, you know, matching my point totals from junior B to junior A is, you know, for a first year guy, it's pretty good. Yeah, that's sick, man. You got to be optimistic. And especially I was telling you before, dude, like I look at you, like you just played, you know, junior A in high school and, uh, you know, you don't want to take your foot off the gas. Like you want to keep going forward and get to that level. But man, you've got time. You know what I'm saying? Work on your game. You know, you just don't finish your rookie season and you got, you know, match your totals. That's sick. Uh, and now you're looking into your second year junior A, I assume, right? Is that what you're thinking yeah. for next yeah. year? You're gonna be thinking about what what's uh what is what are you doing for next year? You talk to Markham or how does it work for uh for that? Are you guys well, you staying in the same spot? With this coronavirus, I'm not sure if we're gonna have ah, to dude, like yeah, this. right. Who knows? <laughs> you know what I mean? No, but um right now I'm in Markham and yeah. you know, um I've had like I said already, but I've been talking to my advisor here and there and just trying to, you know, put put myself in the best opportunity to succeed. As a both as a player and as an individual, and just keeping my options open, you know what I mean. Yeah. I think Markham's a great fit, obviously, and you know. But at the end of the day, you want to do what's best for your hockey development and best as a player too, right? So, yeah, I, you know, for a first year Markham guy, I think that was pretty big. Are you guys uh, as a team? Are you guys building towards something, or do you yeah. have a tight knit group of guys that uh, you're working toward a, a goal? Um, that's one thing they've always said. Like they're always looking to you know make a run, right? And unfortunately, yeah. this year, like you said. Uh, like I talked about my personal life, but personal, uh, but I think just as a team, like the expectations weren't met this year. And yeah. I think the first year that, you know, that since they ever owned the team, that this was, what do you call it? Not what they wanted as a season. Right. So obviously our season was cut short, not because of the virus, but, uh, <laughs> Oh no, but it, on the, on, from the outside, it's like everyone's season was cut short. So it was just sort of a wash, eh? like, <laughs> so, sort of a wash, but you know, obviously I think you guys were already I, done before the virus hit. Yeah, we were, I think, a week, a week or two before, okay. but Markham, like they're obviously like they run a first class organization. Actually, their owner is Zach Hyman, who plays for the Maple Leafs. Okay. Uh, his dad, right? So, yeah. um, you know, like they're always looking to make a run, which is you know good to play for a team that's always looking to get better and you know always looking to put banners up in the rafters, right? So obviously, like you know, they run a first class program, and you know for them, as you know, playoffs weren't you know in reach this year but you know at the end of the day it comes down to the fact that like personally i had a good season and you know i'm going to take this as a learning opportunity not just myself but i know a lot of guys as you know they further their hockey career and just life in general yeah it's got to be exciting man coming off of uh i remember not you know i remember coming off of my my uh i had a really good season in junior b my first year of junior and that summer you know i was really excited to get to work and you know and get keep continuing to improve and working on my game uh, it must be exciting for you, you know, coming off, finishing your first year junior A, and now you got a whole summer here. Now you're looking forward to next season. Um, what are you thinking, man? What are you thinking about for the summer, and what are you thinking about moving forward here? Yeah, so uh, obviously with this coronavirus. <laughs> yeah, let's. What are you doing? What are you? What are your? What are you doing now? Like, uh, you know, right now. So when we're talking here, it's basically we're in the middle. We're in the beginning stages of this quarantine, social yeah. isolationism. Uh, everybody's kind of staying away. Everything is shut down where I am right now. I'm in New York City. Everything's closed. Uh, there's no businesses go open. Nothing's going on. Um, what are you doing, man? What are you doing during this time to uh, keep yourself occupied? And uh, what are you doing? I'm I'm just trying to like keep myself busy. Trying to keep myself active. You know what I mean? Like I feel like this quarantine, like it could have people like watching binge binge watching Netflix all day. You know what I mean? And that's something that I don't yeah. want to do. Like you know, as much as it sucks that you can't go out, I I always live by like you know, doing something's better than doing nothing. You know what I mean? At the end of the day. Oh yeah, bro. Like, You've always been a hard worker, man. Right. So like I'm. Whether it's like you know shooting pucks or like stick handling like outside or whatever a workout like I've been doing some workouts in, in outside here with like online that I found and you know like what do you call it as you know time start to pick up I was told that this is just a calm before the storm you know it's like we might get another another second wave of this right so right. you know it's it's unfortunate that this is happening in today's world and but you know like with from, from like a training standpoint hopefully this ends quick because it's you know, like no rinks are open here and I'm sure it's the same up in New York city. Right. So, you know, I just trying to, 
I think that's for everybody, though. Everyone's in the same boat. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, everyone's in the same boat, which is interesting right now, too, because, like, the, le- the it's a level playing field, even though it's, it's, it's kind of brutal for everybody, mm. you know? So I look at it like it's a real opportunity to, you know, be the best version of myself. That's what I'm trying to do, not to sound, like, preachy, but, like, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have the best quarantine I can possibly have. I'm going to have the best, you know what I mean? I'm going to have the best coronavirus wave that's possible for me. You know, what, what, whatever that means, like, you know, we're doing this right now. We're, we're you know, trying something new, uh, you know, from a content perspective, uh, mm-hmm. as far as training, like, you know, I've actually increased the, the amount of workouts I've been doing since I've been stuck home yeah. here. You know, uh, I'm out on my bike getting sunshine and, and fresh air. I'm doing, you know, I rode 100 miles this week, uh, which is more than I probably would have done if I had, you know, other stuff going on, exactly. you know, that hasn't been affected. So it's important to, you know, take this time to when you look back on it, you want to want to say, oh, I executed and now I'm in a good place for it. Cause like, eventually it's going to be, you know, this is going to pass. It might be, things might be a little different moving forward, but you know what I mean? We all have lives to live and you want to make sure that this doesn't handicap you. Uh, you know, so that's what I've been trying to do. No, I know exactly what you're saying. Like, you know, I'm, obviously I went to Florida and now I'm trapped up in my, what do you call it? My pool house here with, uh, <laughs> dude, I, I remember I called you like, so I was, like I was in Minnesota. I had just done a road trip. Like mm-hmm. I was doing this big road trip and everybody starts kind of talking about this. We're in Minnesota. Right. And people are starting to talk about the coronavirus. Like it's a thing it's coming and I'm in Minnesota and I'm like, I got to get back before this thing right. hits. So I'm driving, I'm coming back to New York, which in hindsight is kind of crazy. Cause it's like the epicenter of the virus right now, which is weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm traveling back here and I remember I called you and you're like, I'm down in Florida. And I'm like, bro, like you're going to get stuck <laughs> down there. I, dude. I, 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 not that, you know, I, I, I kind of left before it even got bad. Yeah, but I just, you know, like I like I told you already, but I was in Florida and just thing after thing after thing was just shutting down, and I'm like, what is going on in this world? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, crazy. Like, like you said, like everyone's just, you know, locked up. And for me, from a personal standpoint, like like you said, we're doing this right here, which is good. And you know, I've been kind of getting onto the, like reading stuff and just looking up stuff on the internet with you know, like just trying to gain. Like school's gonna be starting up soon with online. And are you doing classes in the summer? No, not even that. Like they canceled school here, so like uh, uh, uh. we're all looking to, you know, all trying to get some online stuff. And did did, did you graduate high school last year? Or how how is your no, uh, it's course year. schedule? It's oh, this so you got one more. You have one more year coming up. No, I, well, I got four or five months left. Oh, so you're finishing up last season. I'm finishing, I'm finishing up here. Oh, okay, cool, man. And then you're you're going to be getting a degree, I assume, or graduating. Well, yeah, I, classes. I'm, I'll be graduating high school this year, and then next year, I'm not sure what is in store whether it's you know maybe it's maybe a victory lap fifth year possible you know whatever or actually my bill had died uh he owns his own landscape business so that might be an option as well while uh, for there. work while you play hockey you mean yeah so your plan is to you uh, from where we sit now your plan is to uh, back to markham for another year junior and mm-hmm. possibly either working while you play and yeah. or maybe some I, studies yeah for sure and i just like i want to be doing something you know what i mean like i don't want to be sitting in my bed all day and then right when, when two thirty practice comes around, they go go hawk and come home. You know what I mean? Like, well, you know, I'm not the type of guy that I just like to sit in my bed all day and you know not do anything. You know what yeah. I mean? Got to be doing something. You know what I mean? That that's why it was good this year because I had school. I got up yeah. early, went to school, went to hockey, kept me busy. You know yeah. what I mean? Next year there's gonna be no school. You know, high school's gonna be over, right? So yeah. maybe some online classes, maybe a victory lap in my old school up in Markham again or whatever, and maybe even working. So yeah, that's good. But other than that, is you know, taking day by day with this virus and trying to, you know, keep myself in the top shape as possible because, you know, as much as it sucks, you just got to, you know, let it play its course. So what do they have you? So because you, is, the reason why you're quarantined is because you went down to Florida and that's why when you came back, yeah. they made you uh, self-quarantine? Yeah, basically. So what do they got you on a 14-day uh 14 day trial. Here? Yeah, <laughs> 14-day trial. But honestly, man, it's not even that bad because, like, this house that we built here, like, it's like... <laughs> Set up. It, it, it's, it's a perfect setup. I got a TV to watch. I got a uh, TV to play PS4. I got a shower. I got a bathroom. I got a sink. I got a kitchen. I got a stove. And then... I live in the dream, bro. When it's dinner time, like my food gets delivered to me. I got a <laughs> knock on the door. I eat my dinner. You know what I mean? Like, mom, mom delivers a hot meal. No big deal. Not, yeah, it's, it's not the fact you're that... Not like, even gonna, you, be honest, bro. You're not coming out of this quarantine. You're staying in this quarantine all summer. Honest, I, I might want to. Like, I'm living life right now. You know what I mean? But, you know, it's not the fact that, like... I can't be in my house. It's the fact that like, I just can't go out. You know what I mean? That, and that's what, that's yeah, what yeah. Like, everybody, like, I can't see my buddies. I can't, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But I think I know uh, it, it's tough time. I'm, I'm in New York city and uh, it's, it's, you know, the, everybody's trying to do the self quarantine. It's obviously very crowded here. I don't know. Like for me, I'm just, uh, I look forward to getting out on my bike 
going for yeah. a couple, uh, like I've been riding like 30, 40, you know, 30, 40 miles and spending a couple hours on my bike, which is good. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's going to be nice to get back to normal where you can actually be, uh, around other people and stuff. Yeah, but for now it's good to for, for a while. It's going to be like this. I'm not sure how long this is going to be like, yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, just, like I said, you just got to take it day by day and uh, let it play its course. And, you know, it is what it is, right? There's nothing that we can do about it. And, you know, just uh, hope that everyone gets better and hope that this, you know, passes. Yeah. So talk about for next season, man. So you're thinking you got, you got another year of junior A. Obviously, you know, we just said, like, you've got a couple years, really. If you, if, you know, if you wanted to play junior, you could play junior for three, three more. What do you have? Three more seasons or, or four? Four. Three. So three. you can do all right, so let's just say you got three seasons if you if you needed to, but uh, do you have a personal goal in mind, or do you have something that you're looking to do, uh, you know, with your with your next season? Like, uh, you know, what's a personal goal for you, or what's something that you're trying to you know strive toward for next year and beyond? Yeah, I, think, I think next year is uh, my make or break year. Like, I think next year, like obviously, like I said with the OHL, like that's kind of out of reach because you you just basically said it perfect about the fact that like you guys are gonna age out, right? If I go to the OHL next year, I only have two years, or. Yeah. Right, which makes no sense for me when I can just play a year or two junior A and potentially get a you know a scholarship for college or university, right? So yeah. that's my main that's my main goal next year is to you know have a good season and potentially get a D one scholarship to anywhere in the states. That's a great goal, man, and yeah. uh, I'm excited to to watch you again. I had a great time this year uh, mixing it up with you. Uh, we had yeah. a chance. I had a chance to see you play a couple times. And uh, I'm really excited to see where you take your game to the next level for next season, bro. It's going yeah, to be exciting. Oh, and great goal to have too, man. I love that you're, uh, you know, you yeah, got that NCAA aspiration in mind. That's awesome. Um, one last question, bro. I know I'm, I'm conscious of your time here. I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, oh, kick man, me on the Skype here. It's good. Well, uh, I got a lot of kids, man, reaching out, you know, from, you know, all over the world. And, uh, you know, a lot of them are asking me, like, what do I got to do to get noticed? What do I got to do to play junior? What do I got to do to get to that next level? What advice would you give kids, uh, you know, how to, if they're playing and, you know, you're, you're, you're a young kid and you're playing, like, how do you get to the level that you're at? And, uh, you know, what, what advice would you give a kid for that, at that level? Honestly, I'd probably just say, you know, don't give up. And, you know, I, and I, you know, as cliche as it sounds, just don't give up. And, you know, it's pretty, it's a simple message, but, you know, I've been, like I said, I've been watching a lot of videos and, you know, it's not, like I said already, it's a physical battle, but it's a mental battle too. You just, you know, as you grow up, you just kind of learn that like, you can't get soft between the ears. You got to stay mentally tough, right? So, you know, I think just don't give up. And if you have a goal, just go after it, dream after it. And, you know, don't let anyone tell you that this is not achievable because those are the people that don't want to see you succeed. But when they succeed, they're always saying congratulations. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, dude. You know, I, as like cliche as it sounds, just don't give up and, you know, just be you, do your thing, work hard every day and do something and just get better every single day, whether it's, you know, reading a book, whether it's, you know, stick handling on the driveway for 25 minutes or whatever, and just, you know, no one feels sorry for you at the end of the day, right? So you just got to be mentally, you got to be mentally tough, can't get soft between the ears and just got to battle every single day. Man, that's well said, Johnny. It's, uh, it's been super fun to watch you, dude. And like, you're a testament to it, man. You know, you've, uh, I, I've watched you, uh, you know, basically grow up to the player that you are now. And, uh, you know, all the things you just said are the reasons, are the things that I've seen from you firsthand you know your uh your your attitude's always been really great you've always been working on new stuff you've been making yeah. content for many years and that's how we got to know each other you know some of your videos i've even met up with you and uh hung out and made some videos at your house yeah uh, but yeah. you know your your mental toughness is uh it's obvious bro and it's uh it's really fun to see you uh, having some success and i'm really excited to see where you take it next year and beyond man and uh it's been yeah. fun dude and i really appreciate like you taking the time to come here today man yeah, man, for sure. And, like, the last thing I would say is probably just, you know, just listen to your coaches, right? And learn something from everybody each day, whether it's your parents, whether it's your siblings, whether it's your grandparents, whether it's your coaches, whether it's your teachers at school, you know? Like, they're there for a reason. They've been through what, you know, all these all of us kids as hockey players, whether you're, you know, seven years old, all the way up to, you know, AAA, Junior B, they've been through the experiences that, you know, that we're going through right now. So just take advice from them and learn from them each and every day, and that will make you not – a hockey, not the hockey player, but a better hockey player and a better person too. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, that's what's up, man. That's perfect. That's great. Uh, that's great advice, man. Learn something from every situation. Mm -hmm. Even you know, if you play for the best coach, learn from him. If you play for the worst coach, you got to learn sure. something from that situation too. Right? You, you're stuck in house at a in a in a coronavirus outbreak. <laughs> learn from that. You know, learn something. Learn yeah. something new. Learn something about yourself. I think that's great advice, man. Uh, yeah. Perfect, dude. Perfect, man. That's a great well, way to end it, man. Thanks a lot for coming on, man. Hopefully, we'll, let's do it again, dude.
Yeah, man. Uh, got nothing but time here, so we'll do we'll do we'll do a part two, man. All right, sounds good, man. Thanks Hopefully a lot this for recording me. works. Hopefully, this recording works, Johnny. And I uh, I really appreciate your time today, man. And I'm excited yeah, to get this out. Man. Great it. message. A long time coming. We've been trying to get this going for a while now. So yeah, dude, it's inspiring, man. Keep in touch, and uh, let's do it again. All right, sounds good, Rob. Thanks a lot, eh? All right, thanks a lot, Johnny. You, appreciate man. it. Have a good one. Right. Ciao. Thanks a lot for tuning in, everybody. Hope you liked today's video. Smash that like and subscribe button, share with your friends, and stay tuned for the next video. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot for tuning in, everybody. Tuning in and in and in and in and Oh my God, dude, I wanna smash my face off my table. Thanks a lot for tuning in, everybody. Hope you liked today's video. Uh, hit the like and subscribe button, and be feel... <laughs> I need I need a tighter I need a tighter thing to say. This is just too much.